Hello, hello, and welcome to the Roy's Review Podcast, hot and fresh. I'm Rob. And I'm Andy. And we are back, getting hot, getting fresh, talking about Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Andy, how are you apes? He's back. Yeah, it's back. He's back, baby. I'm good, Robbie. How about you? I'm doing really well. As the listeners can probably tell, we have changed the format for the hot and fresh, so it's coming out in the middle of the wesh. Oh my god, Robbie. I, I was rhyming, and I was like, I can't stop now, can I? That wouldn't be have. prudent. <laughs> okay, okay. Would it have been prudent, Andy? I'm. You know what? I'm not even a hundred. Would it have been sure. Prudential Center? And uh, now he's lost. He's lost entirely. Andy, had uh, you seen Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes before? Robbie, it just came out. No. What about you? So you haven't even seen it before getting on the microphone for this podcast? Oh my fucking god, Robbie! You are wasting everybody's time. You are. You me. are, Robbie. Me. <laughs> the man who notoriously never wastes any time whatsoever. See, there's there's irony here, comedic irony. Ah. Yeah. We're we're smart here. <laughs> Andy, what was your theater experience like? What day did you see Kingdom of the Planet of the Grapes? Well, you know what's funny when you whenever you say Planet of the Grapes, my mom does a thing called Planet of the Grapes, where when we're eating grapes, she puts the grapes like under her top lip, so like it comes out like the old Planet of the Apes movies. And if she's feeling crazy, she'll do one on the bottom too. Whoa. She starts walking around like a monkey, and she's like Planet of the Grapes, right? And I'm like, and at the time when I was a kid, I was like, Mom. This is stupid. She'll do it in front of my friends. I'm like, this is so embarrassing. But now, I'm like, that's fucking gold, Mom. You're a treasure. (laughs) (laughs) Now I request it. The game I used to play as a kid is I used to feed my friend's dog grapes and watch it have seizures. Oh, Bobby. You truly are a terrible human being. (laughs) (laughs) Andy, when did you see this? Oh, that's the question you asked me that I fucking dodged like an asshole. Yeah, uh, for some reason Friday. you were like, yeah, I totally saw this movie. And <laughs> yeah, then went bet. off talking about your fucking mom eating grapes. Yeah, yeah, well. You talked about your mom with grapes in her mouth. Robbie, 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 me. Uh, I saw it on Friday. And uh, I went alone. This is my second theater experience alone. I believe our last Hot and Fresh, I was alone as well. I'm, I'm starting to like it. Starting to like it. You sit alone, get a little bit of lube, a couple of drinks in you. No. <laughs> no, Robbie. I will say, I think it my my experience did affect my view of the movie because I went right after work on a Friday in May. And I know you, you used to teach. May is a rough time. You know, everybody's yeah. like ready to leave. It's just a rough time. So like... I was sleepy, I'm not gonna lie to you, but I did buy myself some pop popcorn, some poopy culo, if you will. That's nope, nope. <laughs> I think you just said poopy butt. I did, yeah. I okay, did. and it felt great. And um, I also got you some think bunch poopy of butts up. feel great. Yeah, yeah, I do. You ever poop your pants and sit in it? Your silence speaks volumes, Robbie. You're doing it right now, aren't you, you son of a bitch? Yo, I'm about to drop the worst diss track on you. (laughs) You think Kendrick and Drake have beef? Listen. You go, you go. How was your movie experience? It was (laughs) good. You You go. You go. I was like, am I rapping? Am I supposed to, like, rap? Uh, my movie theater experience was... It was pretty empty. I saw it on Thursday night. I got a sick poster. Interesting. So that was really cool. And it was pretty empty. All adults, which is nice. Hmm. Yeah, I had a, I heard a couple babies. I was like, even though these are PG-13, none of these are for kids. None of no, them. No, you don't bring a baby. No, this is like... 
This is this is some dark shit. Do you notice that movie theaters, their concession lines are the slowest places on earth? Uh no, my my theater is very efficient in that way. No matter how many people are online, it takes the exact same amount of time. Yeah. I remember theater. that. That was in, in New York. I remember that being a problem. It's like, this doesn't make sense. No, if there's 15 people online or if there's two people online, it's going to take the same amount of time. Yeah. Um, you get you relieved get... when you see a line. You're like, oh, thank God. There's actually a little reason for this to take so long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you get popcorn? Yeah, I got popcorn and I got Reese's Pieces. Hey, I got Bunch of Cruncher. Ooh. Rabbit turds. Oh, yeah, dude. Let me tell you something. Okay. I ate rabbit shit. All right, let's get on to the movie. <laughs> well, I, I wanted to ask you a question about popcorn. Yeah. Okay, I can't wait. Did your... At your theater, do you have... Do they have those, like, those things where you put your popcorn under it and you hit a button and butter comes out? I don't do that anyway, so I don't know. Okay. No, they don't, because they ask, do you like... Would you like extra butter? Okay. No, I don't theater. think they have that at the one I went to see it in. Okay. At my theater, they, they have those. And I used it for the first time. And as I used it, I was like, this is kind of weird and gross. There's just like a big butter reservoir under this thing. It's not real butter. Oh, of course not. But like, what? Like, if, if there is. It's margarine! Bum, bum, oh, bum! No! But, like, if there is, why, like, is anybody cleaning that? Probably not, right? Like, Oh, no. So, like, I clicked it for a second, and I was like, what am I doing? What am I doing? Just eat the popcorn. There's actually a direct line from the urinals to that machine. Oh. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? Yeah, I drank. It's uh, piss, ate, brother. Yeah, I ate piss corn. Yeah, piss. <laughs> piss corn. Piss corn, yeah. That's a terrible name for it. Hashtag piss corn, everybody. Do not hashtag piss corn. Hashtag piss corn, brother. No, no, no. Uh, there's got to be two P's in that, if you know what I'm saying. Pips corn. Oh, okay. I really didn't. I was making a joke. You didn't. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> uh, let's talk about the movie before people leave. They've already left. Well, God bless them. God bless them, and God bless Caesar, whose funeral we open up on. I like that we open up on Caesar's funeral. Excellent transition, dude. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> but this left me confused, because right after Caesar's funeral, it says, Generations Later. And so then later on, there's the reveal that Noah doesn't know anything about Caesar and I'm going what the fuck why oh this is a totally different clan I guess yeah and it's it's kind of strange like you're saying there is a big disconnect between this and the others the other movies that is right you know it's a little weird well that's why when I was watching the trailers for this movie and all the trailers were focusing on Noah, I kept expecting Proximus Caesar to be like the evil leader of his clan. Yeah, I figured that... I, I assumed that Noah was a descendant. Yeah. Of like Cornelius or something. Yeah, I think that's kind of what they implied when we just see his death and then generations later. Yeah, but like if he's a... You know, the at the end of war, uh, like, you see Maurice promising him that, oh, everybody's going to know who you are. Like, your son will know who you are. And, like, you would assume that that would be passed on. So, like, I don't think he is actually a descendant. Unless we find out later and then it's like a whole chosen one bullshit thing. I hope I hope he's not, honestly, at this point. No, I, I don't think he is a descendant. I, yeah. I think he's just another tribe or clan of apes. Yeah. So even though Noah isn't a descendant and isn't even like a follower, a follower, I said, a follower of Caesar's teachings, we see that Caesar has become this like Christ-like character at this point. Yeah. Because 
some apes know about him and follow his teachings to the letter. Other apes know about him and are quote unquote following his teachings. Right. But they seem to be more in line with the teachings of Koba than they were for Caesar. Right. And I think that's like the movie I think the message is kind of split like towards towards the end it becomes about something else. But at first it, it seems to be about like how you know, messages through time can become misinterpreted and then used to, you know, take control of people and, you know, control people generally. Which is cool. I like that message. Control people's genitals? Yeah. Oh, my word. Yeah. There's something else, Robbie. I've seen those. It's like an app and it hooks up to the toy, right? Mm. Yeah, uh, yeah, no, those exist. Yeah, I'm sure they do, Robbie. I got one in my butt right now. Andy, no! Uh, I really liked uh, the villain, Proximus Caesar, and I liked his uh, gorilla lackey. He was pretty cool. And, yeah, I, I just like how he's super regal and hammy. Yes, I like that they didn't reveal him until later on in the movie. Yes. So... It really builds up this tension, and it builds up who this big bad guy must be. Yeah, and until we finally see him. Yeah, I wish they would have done a little more with how he interprets Caesar's philosophies. Like he he only mentioned Caesar like once, uh, to what I remember. But like everything else, he's he's like, I want what's in that vault, essentially. But it's right. like, I, I, I would like to know this guy's philosophies. Real quick, thank you so much for listening. If you want to send us some feedback, send us an email at roidsreview at gmail.com. That's R-O-Y-D-S-R-E-V-U-E at gmail.com. You could also find our music on Spotify, iTunes, wherever you get your music by searching The Roids. That's R-O-Y-D-S. We have two albums, and a Christmas song. Hope you like it. Well, that's something they don't show because they don't show the difference between him and Raka other than Raka's like, I'm peaceful because Caesar believes in peace and coexistence. And right. this guy is just like, in the name of Caesar, we'll kill them all. Right, right. He's just using the name, which again, is you're saying something there. Yeah. But uh, I do wish that Raka and Proximus met. I think that would have been a very interesting uh, conversation. I agree. I think Raka was probably my favorite character. Yeah, he's great. He's like Maurice, but he speaks more. He speaks. I like his role as an old wise man. Yeah. And the humor... His humor worked a lot better for me than the humor of Bad Ape from War for the Planet of the Apes. Yeah, well, because he's likable, you know? Well, it, it's not just that he's likable. It just doesn't feel like his his humor is not based around just being annoying. Yeah, it, it's not forced like it was with Bad Ape. Yeah, a lot Bad of Ape Bad Ape's forced. humor was like, like when he had the binoculars oh, why is everything so small it's like come on that's yeah. this isn't this movie right right and his his humor is more uh Raka's humor that is is more uh tied to the tone of the movie right like, he's not, playing like, the straight man yeah yeah it's good now here's a point I know you and I disagree on I thought the first half of the movie was the stronger half Yes, I, I, I disagree. I, I, and again, I think this might be because I came in a real sleepy boy, you know? And because, you know, it wasn't like, ooh, look at all this. I was like, I'm, uh, I'm a little bored. My mind's starting to wander. I'm starting to wander. I'm starting to walk around the theater. <laughs> starting to ask people, you know, if they're going to finish that. You going to finish that popcorn, buddy? Sir, please sit down. Please get Sir, back to your seat. Get your hand out of my popcorn. 
And I got my hand in his popcorn. Then I'm like, what is this? He's like, that's my wiener. I'm trying to do something here. I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. People sir, you're here that. alone. You're here alone. Yeah. What are you doing, sir? He's like, this is exactly what I was hoping for. <laughs> See, that's the thing. Once Rocka died, I found myself asking, where is this movie going? And I felt like the answer was ultimately nowhere. Because, like okay. you said, Rocka and Proximus Caesar don't ever meet in this film. So we never get to explore these different interpretations of Caesar's teachings. It's just Rocka dies, and now, oh, now we're just in a prison camp. Right, and I think it's kind of, we get, Noah has to choose. And it's very obvious what the right choice is, though. Like, right. Because Noah, he sees Raka as like, Raka's teaching him. And then he dies. He sacrifice. Uh, does he sacrifice himself or he just, he just gets. He dies because he gets tangled up on the bridge and he gets tangled yeah. up in like the net. And then I think that's actually is either. It's not Proximus Caesar, I don't think. It's, I, I think it's his goon, his big yeah, gorilla, the gorilla goon. Yeah. Who cuts him loose and he just drifts off into the rapids. And before he dies, he says, Ape stronger together, right? Yes. Yeah. But uh, so he's teaching him, and then Proximus starts talking to Noah as well. And he's like, oh, you have promise, you know, like you, you're you very bright. So, like, are you, he has to choose, are you the good Caesar, like Raka, or are you the fake Caesar, like Proximus, you know? Right. But it's very obvious what he's going to choose, you know? It's really weird in these movies that Koba gets no mentions. Like, yeah. we're not, no one mentions Koba at all, even though you see a lot of Koba in Proximus Caesar. Yeah, he's also a bonobo. Are they, are they the same kind of ape? Yes. Ah. Bonobo, a bonobo monkey. Yeah. Cool. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um. Well, I mean,. I think they're maybe they're saying something about how, you know, it, bad guys get lost in history, but they never do. They're usually, you know, like we all know who the bad guys are. Yeah, throughout like history. Because this doesn't explore how Proximus Caesar became, like, came to power. Yeah, or anything like that. Like all we see is him having this big camp. Where he's just trying to open this vault. And you understand why he's trying to open this vault. Yeah. But you'd think at some point, some like, he captures all these clans. Eventually, they're going to be like, hey, why are we all doing this for him? Yeah. And, like, what are they doing there? Well, that's the thing. He just, there's just weapons behind the vault. That's all they're trying to get is weapons, it seems yeah. like. Because he calls evolution, I believe you call it. Right. I and mean, there's, it's there, right there's, behind that door. I think it's it's not just weapons; it's also like technology. Yeah, you know, and that's like because they're not quite there yet. Like Noah's the first one; like it's a huge deal that he fixed one of their zappy spears, right? Because William H Macy's the guy making them, and uh, they're like, "Yeah, this guy's really this, this Noah guy's really bright. He fixed one of them," and they're like, "What?" But he's an ape. You know, so, like, they're starting to become a little technologically savvy. But, like, right. I think, yeah, he is right. Evo like, years of evolution are behind that door. Like, you can change, like, uh, generations are of evolution are behind that door. He's correct. Yeah. You know, if they get their hands on technology and weapons and stuff, they're, like, a couple decades more advanced than they were. That's true, but did they have weapons at this point? I didn't like, see any guns. I don't know what the humans could have hidden in that vault that the apes wouldn't have gotten their hands on. Because at one point, May is like, oh, it's going to teach, it's a book that could teach humans how to speak, but it was really just a disc that would help them transmit a signal out. Yeah, and like what the hell are the apes going to do with that? Nothing. But like they're not going to look at that and be like, oh, this is a microchip that goes into a, a big 
satellite. Like, no, they're not going to know that. Exactly. And it's not like every human being stored every gun in the world in this little vault. Right. The apes probably have everything in there or have had access to in the past everything in that vault. Sure. But so if none it's of like, this, like, makes any sense. It's not explained very well. And before it's even explained, it's immediately destroyed. Right. So, like, it just seems like it was, like, a, a, a society where, like, probably rich people were like, we got to build something because the world's ending. We got to we gotta be able to, like... That's what they said happens, basically. Yeah. But I just don't think there's anything they would have put in there that would have been worth all of this. Because at one point, Proxima Caesar even says... Uh, you know, cool, it doesn't matter. We can sacrifice all these apes. I don't care. Yeah. It's because he's a bad dude. Yeah, but it's he's a bad dude, and we basically see, like, well, what possibly could be in there that you haven't had already? Right. Here's a question. Questions. Does he know about these other humans who can talk? I guess he does, because he's killed off may's whole family yeah and he has william h macy but does he know of these like colonies of people yeah i don't know that that part i didn't really care for that i feel like there were big swaths of this movie that were the story beats of the humans that were cut out because they needed to make this movie two and a half hours because this movie's already kind of long but all of a sudden, at the end of the movie, it's revealed that there are all these colonies of people who are totally fine, which to me undoes the entire movie. Yeah, like they where wow, in for three hundred years, right? I don't know. Yeah, and I didn't it, like that. But it's like for three hundred years, and then when we see these people, they're wearing like hazmat suits and shit. But yeah, May is just walking around fine. Yeah, so I guess they're immune to the, the, the dumb guy disease. But if they're immune to it, why is she coming out like she's walking into Chernobyl? She's grabbing the disc from May like she's grabbing, like she's touching the elephant foot. So maybe it's they know May, maybe May is immune, but nobody else is. But William H. Macy was out there, too. So I don't know. It's just not explained. And they like it's like tagged in at, at the end. So it's like it's kind of like an afterthought. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't I didn't care for it. That's why to me, it just undoes this whole thing where it's, oh, there's tons of humans who could speak. Right. So like we're back to where we were. But also, it's been 300 years, and they haven't been able to find any contact whatsoever. This was the one disc that would get the satellites up and running. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. And it, it's just, like, when is it going to be a planet of the apes? You know, like, because there's clearly a bunch of people, and they're doing fine. They got computer screens and shit. Yeah, they have like, electricity. So, like, they can easily kill all these apes these apes don't have guns anymore if they have guns they could easily kill all these apes i agree so it's just like back to square one like i thought the apes won it's their world now but apparently it's not well at the end of the movie we see them look into the telescope and i was expecting the charlton heston spaceship to crash land during the end, when everyone was looking up into space. I had a feeling that that might have happened, but I was glad it didn't. It's better than what we got. Sure, but I think that, because in the Planet of the Apes, which I've, I don't think I've seen, maybe I have, but I was a, a wee lass. But, like, they're way more advanced at that time, when he crash lands. And... They have, like, colonies of people that, like, do their work for them or something. So, like... But we don't... Where does this movie go, then? Because they can't get there. This movie oh, doesn't lead dumb. into that. 
what they're going to do, they're going to do another two movies with this crew. And then they're probably going to do a Planet of the Apes remake in this universe. I think they're out of stories. What know. other think... ape story could you ape centered story could you possibly tell in this universe now? I don't I don't know, but they I mean this one kind of came out they it seems like they pulled this one out of their tushy. It's not bad. No, it's not bad, but at least with this one you have the idea of hey, we've gone 300 years in the future. It is it truly is a planet of the apes. <laughs> but yeah. th- then at the very end of the movie they go, "Oh, by the way, it isn't." Yeah, by the way, not really. We're actually, it's probably just going to be another movie of people versus ape again. And that's the thing. I don't care about that. No, I already saw it. And you know what? There's no way you're going to do it better. No, you're not going to do it better. Is fire. Brother. So you've finally taken a big swing where we've gone big into the future. It's basically all talking apes. I'm on board with this. But then you reveal all these talking humans along with the wild humans so we have wild humans and domesticated humans yeah and like i thought i mean the whole draw is oh my god she can talk she can talk she can talk she can i can sing <laughs> but it's like she's the she's wow what an anomaly but right. turns out who cares there's a bunch of yeah to your point before i disagree i think that the movie like, even though I liked Raka, I liked him a lot. I thought after he died, I thought the movie kind of picked up because then we get like we get the villains and we get, you know, the actual story, you know, like right. where before was kind of like a precursor to that, you know, not that it was bad. I just I, I enjoyed it a little more. I think this movie looks really good. I think there are certain parts that get a little too dark, but I think that's because this movie is literally all CGI. Yeah, but it it does look really good. It looks really good. I You've seen if you haven't seen the movie The Planet of the Apes, the original one. You've seen what the apes look like in that, correct? Yeah. Does it seem to you like they're making the apes in these start to look more and more like those apes? That's the vibe I was getting. Maybe a little bit, yeah. Which I think is a good thing. I agree. To start showing a little bit of this evolution. Yeah, I don't think the apes in the original one look bad either. No. Well, it's awesome costumes. Yeah. I like the relationship that we see between Noah, Anaya, and Suna, I believe is the name. I think that's really well done. It's something I actually would have liked to see more of. But again, they crammed a lot into this movie. This was two and a half hours long. They had to trim this for time. Yeah. Yeah, I did. I liked them as well. I just didn't. It didn't... uh... It didn't feel like uh, Caesar, what's his name, Maurice and Rocket. Like, it didn't feel like that. You know, no, I, would, I agree. But we had three movies with them, so it's different, you know? Exactly. I, I wish they did more because we get that scene where Anaya's like, Anaya's scared. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. But then he just but... comes right there. It's like, ah. Yeah. It's like, like we on. need to, that's the thing. We watch Caesar grow up. Yeah. So, like, we're connected deeply with Caesar. And Noah, like we see him get an egg, and that's cool. But like, you know, it's 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 different. Noah's not a bad character by any means. I like Noah. I like Noah a lot. I think they do a really good job of making him a sympathetic character, starting yeah. at that scene when they're collecting the eggs, and he's like, No, no, no. We leave one, that's the law. Yeah. And I liked I liked that a lot. I liked how there's a a rule yes like always leave one and that's like both uh like it's just like the right thing to do mm-hmm. you know like you don't want to leave this this mother childless but also it makes sense because we need we need these birds we use them so like if we take all the eggs we're not gonna have any birds you know here's a question though questions what are they actually doing here what do you mean? Well, like, the clan just raises eagles? 
Yeah, I'm not really sure what they do with them. But I I mean, obviously they could use them to fight because we see that at the end. Yeah, but it feels like they're just stealing this this mother's babies and then training and then raising them as pets in the same vicinity as the mother. That's almost mocking the mom. It is. Yeah, it's very strange, but also interesting. But also, yeah, why are they doing that? That's another thing. We I wish we saw more of the relationship between Noah and his father's bird. Yeah. But it's something that's constantly in and out, and that's it's like, how about we focus on that for the movie? A lot of the movie should have been, oh, they're focusing on the relationship between Noah and the bird. But the yeah. bird just follows him until he goes, you know what? You're right, kid. Yeah. They're, they're, this movie is juggling a lot. Yes. And, I mean, the last one was, too. Previous episode of War of the Planet of the Imps, check it out. But, like, uh, I think this one is a little less successful. But, again, it doesn't have characters that we've known for two movies. Right. So, yeah. It, it's still good, you know. It's just not as good. Right. William H. Macy has a really good death. I like that. May just chokes him out like she's Samoa Joe and then throws his body into the ocean because he's like, you know what? I don't like what you're doing. Yeah. He's like, I'm, I'm going to tell. I'm telling. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, no, you're not. Well, he's like, listen, things aren't so bad here. Yeah. And like, is he betraying his race? But like, so like at the time, his race is a bunch of like neanderthals just running around like right. they can't talk and then it, there's her but like the big picture is there's more of them so it's like maybe he was actually a bad guy but at that point the guy has two broken ankles what is he supposed to do he's like fuck it i'm just gonna stay alive they feed yeah. me they keep me clothed they give me shelter and all i gotta do is read sure i'll do it yeah and like make zappy weapons yeah, exactly sure I like the new slur that we have. Echoes. Yeah. I'm going to be calling every person I don't like a filthy echo. Robbie, no. Go back home, you filthy echo. Well, uh, I found uh, was a little confusing was that they call like the the dumb people. They call them Novas. You know, like like Nova yeah. from war. Which which I thought was cool, but also you named the the main character Noah. So like, I wasn't confused, but I could see how like if I brought somebody who never saw this movie before, they'd be like, ah, Noah, Nova, ah. Yeah, no, ah. I could see that being very weird. Yeah, I liked the line of "We call them all Nova." Yeah. Why? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I like the I like the final fight. Final fight, uh, when like right after they, they blow up the dam, and Noah has to fight the gorilla, in, okay, like while the water level's rising, and he ends up drowning him. That's awesome that when cool. he gets stuck. Yeah, that was very cool. Also cold, cold as hell, brother. He yeah. like watched him drown for a little bit. <laughs> He's like <laughs> just to make sure he was dying. Hey, what are you gonna do? I don't blame him. No, I don't blame him either. But I also liked um when they they're fighting on the roof of that thing. And uh, he's getting his ass beat, and then he starts, you know, ho, oh, oh. And uh, the birds come. Yeah. And they start pecking the shit out of the bad guy, Proximus. I thought that was cool. That was cool, but it also made no sense to me. Preach, Robbie. Proximus Caesar just walks up there with all of the other apes in, Caesar, in Noah's clan. Yep. No one says anything to this guy. And then they're about to just let him and Noah fight one-on-one. -on -one. It's like, there's 80 of you. Just take him. And they're like, oh, we got to let Noah do this on his own, I guess. Yeah. Until he starts calling for the birds. And then they go, hey, you know what? I guess we'll, we'll join in on calling for the birds. Yeah. And it's like, you are correct. were you going to help him or were you not going to help him? Why did you let him walk up there with all of you? Yeah. Like, yeah. it's one, it felt like one of those movie tropes, and that's the problem. These movies have never done this before, 
it's one of those movie tropes where it's annoying because they didn't do this, the, these other movies. But they do this thing where you think it's done. Oh, but the big bad's not dead yet. Yeah. Because here he comes, and it's like, stop him. There's 80 of you. Yeah, you are 100,000% correct. It's also, here's a, here's a question. Questions. Are all the other apes that were there, are they all dead? I, I, there was a tremendous amount of apes there. I'm assuming they're all dead. That's fucked up. Yeah. All right. We talked about it a little bit, but the humans, like I said, had me confused throughout because we see May in regular clothes. Then we see the group of wild humans who can't speak. And then at the very end, again, we see the colonies and it just feels like there was a lot of the human stuff that was cut out. Yeah, you are for true. Um, I didn't love the ending with the humans and how they're uh how they've made contact with the other humans. We already did that in Dawn. I mean, I we already kind of said that. Yeah, no, but you're right. They did that in Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Yeah. Should we get into our final thoughts in Letterboxd? I believe so, Robbie. Andy, give us your final thoughts, Jerry Springer. <laughs> I thought this was good, but not great. I don't really think it holds a candle to the Caesar trilogy, but it's enjoyable enough. Uh, I just it, like it doesn't seem to justify its its own existence entirely, but it is a good time. Uh, I don't really like where it seems to be going with the humans because we've already done this, but you know, we'll see. What about you, Robbie? I agree. Good, not great. I thought the movie sort of petered out towards the end. The humans left me confused. And this feels like a legacy sequel without being a legacy sequel. Yeah. Yeah. Now, who who is Peter? Paul and Mary? <laughs> I think this is a three-star movie. I agree. I say we go to Letterboxd and we put three stars down for Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Now, Kingdom Robbie... Hearts of the Planet of the Apes. Gosh. Sora, look out! I think I think Caesar. Uh, I think Caesar wanted wanted apes to rule the world. That was a bad. That was a bad goofy impression. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, I was kind of confused. I was like, I don't know who that was. I got the garsh, and then I lost it after that. Um. Uh, what was I gonna say? Shit. I don't know, but I just gave this film three stars on Letterboxd. Robbie, to continue our conversation about um, the titles of these movies, how do you feel about the title of Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes? I'll tell you this. It's funny. I thought about this while I was watching this. It's better than the tr than the title of a trailer I saw, of a movie of a trailer I saw. So... They're coming out with Bad Boys 4. Yeah. I thought the last Bad Boys was Bad Boys 4 because the title of it was Bad Boys Forever. No, for life. Well, for life. Yeah. And then it turned out that that was the third <laughs> was Bad three. Boys. Yeah, they shot their load too, too early with that one. And this one, Ride or Die, is the fourth one. Yeah. And go, you know what? That's worse than this. I agree. Uh, I don't. I don't again, understand I, why they don't just say "Bad Boys 3 and "Bad Boys Four. On like that why, one, I agree with you. Yeah, there just seems to be a thing with titles now, where it's like you can't just put a, a number in. You gotta like put a, a subtitle word. Yeah, and like it just doesn't work for me. I agree. But this is its own thing. It doesn't like it is very loosely connected to the last trilogy. So I could see I don't I think all the names are kind of shitty for this, but whatever. Yeah, at this point, I'm just used to the names. Yeah. Well, I wrote a song. I wrote a song too, Andy. I also have 
a pick to flip. Would you fucking flip it then, Robbie? Call it. Heads. It's tails, brother. God damn it. Tails. Um, you go first. All right. Um, so as you might uh hear, but maybe not, I don't know. I just got my voice back today. I lost my voice again. Where'd uh, you find it? <laughs> um, I went to the doctor about it and they were they were just like, ah. And I said, Oh, good, great diagnosis. So that'll be uh, thirty five hundred dollars. Yep. <laughs> I said, ain't that a miracle? Yeah. Um, my song's an instrumental because I, oh, I oh boy. cannot sing. Cannot sing. Uh and it's called Kingdom. And uh it goes a little something like this. That's my song called Kingdom. I like that a lot. I like the guitar in that. Thank you. Mark Knopfler's uh, Guitar Heroes over here. <laughs> I uh, I did play with my fingers on that. Mm, but, that's um, good. That's good that you have fingers. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't use a a, a, a pick. Well, only for the 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 jang the jangy uh, rhythm part. That blank blank blank. That was a pick. That was cool, but I liked it. Uh, thank you. I, uh, you know, I, I figured it's, you know, at least the first half is kind of like a journey. Like he, after his village gets burned down, he has to like, it's a big trek. And a he's big fighting Shrek. Out. Big Shrek. Yeah, he's finding out more about the world, about onions, and the history. Yep, you know, and the history of the world and onions. And he, uh, you know, I just figured like the the riff is a makes me think of like a you know. A, a long and harrowing journey. And I like that's it. I agree. What this is, you know, Robbie, your song. Tell us about it. My song is called "Kingdom of Apes." Because truth be told, I actually forgot to title it, and Robbie. since I called it "Kingdom Apes Song," I said I'm gonna throw an "of" in there. Robbie. I know. So my song is called "Kingdom of Apes," and it goes like this. We work to 
so much to learn Find another village and I'll let it burn Sacrifice many apes and break down the door I have everything but I still need more was my song called kingdom of apes and i was singing as proximus caesar saying welcome to my kingdom of apes i like it i like that uh that pre-chorus part oh thank you yeah pretty cool um but yeah that's really it nothing much to say about that you know it's it's tough when you watch a movie once and then you go home and go let's write some lyrics about it yeah yeah uh hot hot and freshers are, are a little a little hard yeah, because it's always like, I hope I remember that line right. Yeah, yeah. I kind of had it a little easier because I couldn't sing. So I was like, oh, fuck it. I, don't gotta... I liked it. Yeah. Uh, um, I I also liked, to go back to the movie, I liked how um, when she shoots the gun and she shoots that one ape, like everybody was like, what the hell was that? Like, what the hell was that? Like, oh, yeah. Nobody's seen a gun in years. So like I thought that was cool. But uh and I liked what you said in your song about him. He's like constantly seeking knowledge. Yeah. Like information is his his tool. I like that. It was cool. Which also in a way it's like he's not a totally bad guy. Like No, I would I, I mean, mean he is, if, but yeah, like but if you know knowledge you, is power. You, yeah. Yeah. Knowledge but, is shower. No. Damn. Uh, I mean, if you if there were no history books and like no knowledge of the past, like definitive knowledge, wouldn't you seek it out? Like, yeah, probably. Yeah, it's the nature of intelligent beings to do so. So, it's, you know, it's cool. I, I have one more question before we wrap things up here. At the end of the movie, where did her gun go? We see her talking to Noah, and she's holding the gun behind her back. And then, like, he gives her something, and then she's holding her hands out. But, like, what, she dropped the gun? She probably put it, like, in the in her waistband. Hope the safety was on. I hope so, too. It's a good way to get a second ass crack. Hmm? Andy, where can they find our music? Well, you go to Spotify, you go to Deezer, you go to Apple Music, uh, wherever you get your music. You type in the Roids, and you'll find a plethora of songs, uh, many collections of podcast songs, and also original music that we did before this podcast. Uh, but if you go to theroids.bandcamp.com, you will find all of the podcast songs and the music that we've done, and uh, as well as guest songs. And it's well over 200 songs, so look out. Robbie, the... Social. 
You go to Instagram. You go to TikTok for now. You go to Threads. You go to X. You go to YouTube. You type in the Roids Band. There we are. Yeah, right. You can send us an email at roidsreview at gmail.com. Bad chance. Wherever you're listening to us, give us a five-star review. You can say whatever you'd like. Just give us a five-star review. Bullshit. How do you like my heckling? I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah. It fills me with confidence. I'm going to do it from now on. I like it. Yeah, like not even just at the end of the podcast, like throughout the podcast. Oh, awesome. That's going to sound so like, good. I can't wait. You'll be like, hello, hello. I'll be like, duh, hello, hello, duh. I'm going to get you real good, Robbie. Yeah. And then you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to hit you. I'm going to act like Kendrick Lamar. I'm going to call you a pedophile. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, oh well, an innocent little joke. All right. You're a pedophile. Bam. Yeah. And then I'll be like Drake and I'll say, well, guess I won. Guess I won this rap battle. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> this coming Monday, we got Rebel Moon Part 2. Rebel Goon Fart 2. Holy <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> the um car giver it's oprah giving away cars that's very good yeah yeah the tar giver it's like oh it's like oh my god you just pour tar on me well thank you so much for listening and uh leave a leave a review tell your friends we we love you tell all your friends all right bye everybody goodbye <laughs>